Hey guys, my name is Carly and welcome back to my channel. Today's adventure is going to be making a, uh, a mermaid tail. <laughs> of course, what else am I going to make? <laughs> so today I'm going to be making a mermaid tail for you guys. It's quite different from the first video that I created, which is called uh, Make a Mer Sew a Mermaid Tail with Me. And mainly because when I sew my own mermaid tails, I tend to like stuff around and I don't really care so much about, you know, I don't care too much. But lately I have been making for clients, so I've had to like up my game quite a bit more so I am now uh, working a little bit more professionally. This is not a sewing tutorial so please I'm not going to show you how to sew. If you want to look for more in-depth uh, videos on how to make your own uh, mermaid tail of course Vancouver Mermaid. She has got tons of videos and materials and resources and um, she's a lovely person so please go hit her up and go have a look there um, so what I'm doing I am vlogging how I make my mermaid tails for you guys the mermaid tail that I'm making today is going to be a koi fish tail um, it's something I've always wanted to make but it's been very difficult um, because I struggle to get the balance of the dark blacks and the whites and the oranges to like go together nicely so that it's not like an eyesore and more specifically getting the scales on the white area to stand out. Mm -hmm. I've come up with a plan. I don't know how it's going to work. Let's see how it goes. Um, so yeah, <laughs> oh, this is so informal. Um, so have a look, have a gander at how I put together some mermaid tail. It's supposed to be a light-hearted video. We're under quarantine still. Um, so it's year 2020. It's April and um, yeah, South Africa is still under their shutdown. So uh, let's make some mermaid tails, guys. Okay, so when I get my tails back from the printers, um, they tend to, to save space. I put all my pieces together on one sheet. So what I like to do is to start off by um, just rough cutting and uh, separating the pieces from each other. I'm going to go back in later. Oh, I made that a bit tight, eh? Um, to go in a bit later and cut a little neater. Okay, so no, I'm not doing a brilliant job, but like I said, I'm going to come back in afterwards. My only goal right now is to just get the pieces out. Okay, so oopsie like to see me cut out one of the big fins so uh, like I said this is a rough cut I'm still gonna come in a bit closer just now I just want to get it out the main pattern ah this is one of my side fins Pretty nifty, huh? So there you go. I have now finished cutting out the body of the koi tail. Ah, oh, my gosh, look at that. Look at that. I'm quite excited, aren't you excited? Uh, when I make my design, I have two fins that mirror each other. Doesn't that look pretty? It looks like a pair of bat wings. I've got to line them up. Can you see that? You can actually see the print through the fabric. And while it doesn't show up on camera, I can actually see how I need to line these up so I'm going ahead to do that okay okay so now we have pinned everything okay so there's a, a big fluke well, not a big fluke so there is a big side fin a baby side fin another baby side fin that'll go the opposite way and another big side fin like so so I have four of them let me grab the serger and I'm going to show you how I um, run it through the machine. Okay, so this is kind of difficult to film and concentrate on what I'm doing at the same time. So um, I wonder if you can see, you can see that there's a line there. So that's how I'm able to guide myself through. And um, I'm going to go ahead and start.
So now to get this loop diddy loop diddy loop, this loop diddy loop diddy loop, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the overlocker and take it off there and then start again, take it off and start again. And that gets a very nice outline going. So do you see how I took it off? Okay, so that is one loopity loop and now I'm going to come back and do the next one. So I'm cutting in there, you see that? So I'm going to start there. And there you go. So there you've got a lovely shape. Okay, where it's following the curves. And then you stick your hand in. And you try and just quickly turn it inside out just so that you can do a check to see if there's any white and if there's anything that I missed. Okay, so far so good. Looks like it's okay. Looks like I didn't miss any spots. Yep. Looks good. All right. But you see how it's like puffy now. Okay, so those corners are kind of puffy. So what I do now is I actually take my sewing machine and then I'm going to do a, a, a top stitch. Okay, that goes over here to hold those shapes in place. Okay, um, but before I do that, I'm going to do the three other fins quickly. I'm not going to show that on camera because it's exactly the same thing over and over, just for the three other fins. Okay, so there's one side fin done. Okay, so I have switched out to my regular sewing machine. I have uh, turned each fin inside out and I hear they all are sitting in the background here. And I have just pinned in the corners so I can see exactly where they are. And now I'm going to do a top stitch along the top so that they are able to keep their shape. Um, technically, I would love to have color changing <laughs> uh, thread. I don't have that. So I'm just going to stick with good old fashioned black. All right, this is just my tail anyway. So if I had someone else's tail, I would make this a little bit more matching to their color. But for me, this is fine. So back stitch. That's a quick little top stitch just to hold the fins shape in place. And here we go. I have all the fins made. So here's our little butterfly <laughs> that I like to do. Um, so let's move that out the way. I just photographed that for Instagram. And also speaking of Instagram, what I'd done is I'd run a poll to ask if you guys would like me to um, do sequins on the koi tail. And a lot of you said maybe it's a bit much. <laughs> so I didn't do that. But um, there you go. There are the side fins. They've been sewn up and sewn together now it's ready we're ready to sandwich them into one hey guys so i'm back um so now it's the job of attaching the fins onto the body okay so the body's been cut out and i need to lay the whole thing flat out so i can actually see what's going on um and my workspace isn't uh big enough for me to do that so i kind of like i live in a small place <laughs> so i've got to kind of like clean up the floor and lay it out on the floor and then I'm going to position the fins where I think they would look nice 
going down the sides of the body. So these uh, four fins are going to go into the side seams. Um, I'm not going to do anything on the front here. They're just going to simply go on the side seams. And um, so, yeah, I have to take off my microphone though because it's not going to reach. But, um, but yeah, let's, let's lay it out for you. You guys can have a look. Okay, so this is the combination that I've decided to go with. Um, the reason being is that if I had these underneath here, because I was really inclined to have them here, if I had them here, um, the top fin would have, when it flops down, would have covered up the bottom fin completely, and that's not the point. Okay, so I've gone with my usual combination where I've got two on the sides and two on the on the, the calves over here, and you see how I have folded them inside and I've folded the tips towards each other so that they don't get caught up in the main seams when I start sewing. Okay, so that's the combination that I've gone for. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the other half of the tail. Now, this one I've got to make sure I line up correctly because these, um, these actually match up to this side. So I must just make sure that I line it up properly. Okay, and, uh, and then I'll start pinning all of that together. All right, so this is going to be very boring. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and do that. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then I'll show you when I am done. Okay, so here's the part that induces a little bit of anxiety. So <laughs> um, I can't talk too much during this stage over here. So I'm going to be quiet, but I'm going to start now surging off this edge and all the way through and stopping before I get to the zipper point. I'm not going to film the whole sewing process because like it gets boring after a while. But uh, now I now I begin. What makes this nerve wracking is that it cuts. <laughs> it cuts off. So huh, you can't put back on what you've already cut off. So uh, let's let's go for it. Okay, so we leave the side of the fluke completely open. I come all the way down to the bottom <clears throat> where the oops, ouch. <coughs> So I come all the way down to the bottom where the end of the fluke is. Hey guys, are you ready? Okay, let's have a look. She has been sewn up. Have a look. Oh my lord, absolutely gorgeous. I can't wait to show it to you properly, but um, she is ready to get her waistband and to get her zipper. And uh, it's just looking awesome. It's looking absolutely awesome. I'm so stoked. I'm so stoked. I can't wait to get into the pool with this. Hey guys, so I'm back in front of the sewing machine to do the part that I <laughs> like the least and that is doing the zipper. Now since my last video I have found ways that are a lot better and um, I actually took two of my orders to a seamstress to um, ask her to put the zipper in for me. And then when it came back, I had a look to see how she had done it. And she, she did it really, really simply. And it seemed to be very effective. So I adopted the same thing myself. So I have sewn a tail already using their technique of putting in a zipper. And I'm going to carry on using that technique because it was a lot easier. Um, and unfortunately, it's not going to be like the invisible zipper look that I was always trying to get right but unfortunately I don't think my level of sewing is there yet so um so for now there'll be an exposed zipper but I know now what to do okay so usually I would sew in the zipper first and now I've learned that I can actually sew in the zipper is one of the last things that I need to do so that's pretty cool um all I gotta do here is you see where the where the end is of the fabric and you see where the top rung is okay I'm gonna open that up a bit and I'm going to shove that way past. Okay, so I don't line up the end 
Let me show you. I don't line up the end with the end. I put it much deeper in. Okay, like so. So I don't have this end interfering um, with the aesthetic of it. And then what I do is I'm going to pin it in. And then I'm going to sew along this line here. So I'm going to go ahead and pin in just the one side. And then when I'm done with that, I'll pin in the other side. Okay, so it's very boring watching me pin something. But um, I'm just holding it against the line here and I'm just pinning. <laughs> okay, so like I said, this is not a tutorial on how to do these things. I'm just vlogging to show you um, how I put my things together. Okay, so my zipper, my zipper goes in towards the end now and no longer at the beginning. Okay, so when I'm done, I'll show you. Okay, so I have just pinned down the one side of the zipper to the fabric and I'm going to attach the zipper footer to my sewing machine and then I'm going to stitch a line where the pins are. <laughs> and then once I've done that, I'm going to do the same thing but to the other side. Okay, so let me change the footer and then we can have a look and see how that all works out. Zipper footer busy being installed. And, uh, and there you go. It's in. <laughs> All right, let's get sewing. Mm -hmm. I think it's first. It's a little bit on the long side of Got it. this side. Okay, here we go. Where's the go. Oh, do a good start. So I've just finished the first side of the zipper, which is pretty cool. All right. Now I get to do it all over again. Oh, let me move this out the way so you can see. So now I have to take the zipper to the other side of the fabric. I should probably start at the top though. Close the zip too. Uh take it to this side and do the same thing where well, I'm now going to align the zipper to the top of the seam going all the way down and then sew on this side so I'm just quickly going to go pin this as well okay so you'll see you'll see there and I'm going to pop a pin in here come a little bit further down Okay, line it up where the black is, black on black. Okay, pop that one down. And I'm just gonna basically work my way down the fluke. Since I found this uh, simpler method of putting in the zipper, I think previously I was seriously like overcomplicating it, like hardcore overcomplicating it. And um, you know, I watched a bunch of YouTube tutorials on how to do this. And then I kind of like decided to do a mishmash of my own way and then saw the way this like the thing was is how do I end the zipper going right at the bottom where it meets the rest of the fabric and I saw the way they did it and it was so darn simple and um, so I've tried it and it works um, so yeah it's it's before I used to get heart palpitations <laughs> making zippers and now it's uh, not so bad okay so I'm going to keep pinning and I'm going to sew and I'll show you when I'm done. Okay, so there you go. I am preparing the zipper to sew the, the end in. So I'm taking it to the machine and I'm finding where the seam starts and I'm going to sew. I'll show you when I'm done, but let me just get the sewing done quickly so you can see it. It's easier to see it once I've done it. Okay. Okay, so 
there it is. So now that you've got the lines actually in, now you can see what I was talking about. So the upper line is the zipper line and that stops there. Okay, so that's the zipper line. I've just sewn in this top line. Okay, so this top line that goes from here to there. Okay, so when I turn it inside out, let's do this. So when it's inside out, do you see how it finishes off the zip? Look there. Okay, so it's got a nice little, it's got a nice little V and the zip disappears into that little V. Okay, so that's, that's the thing I discovered that turned my life around about zippers compared to the last video. Time to change the cotton because now I'm going to be doing the waistband. Is I have pre-wound cotton um, on some bobbins already so I don't have to sit now and wind that all up but I'm sure anybody with any experience in sewing already knows that. So I'm just going to go ahead and put the footer back on and we're going to replace the bobbin with the new one that's got the correct color in. Okay. All right. Let's read the machine. And then I must also not forget now at this stage to switch to a zigzag pattern because I like to have the zigzag at the top because it's nice and stretchy and doesn't pop when you attempt to stretch your um, your mermaid tail over your body when you're trying to put it on. Hey, come on. Pick up that bobbin. There we go. Got it. You've done this enough times. It's really not a big deal. Okay, but that's coming now now. That's South African for in a moment. <laughs> uh, right. Waistband. Let's get you all in like so. Okay. Now I'm just going to take this. I want to trim this a little bit nicer. Ah, I've done that before. Okay. Fixed. <laughs> and what I've done is I have just uh, pinned in the um the casing that i'm creating so that i can put the elastic band in here so it's about an inch and a half two inches wide and i've set my machine at a zigzag when you sew the casing you also leave a little opening hey because you want to be able to put your um you want to put your elastic waistband through uh, a hole which i love <laughs> i'm joking i hate doing that um but yeah let's go for it Okay, so that's done. So I've done the, the zigzag going around the waistband and uh, I've left the little door open on the side. I actually sometimes leave that open on the side as well um, for my clients in case they want to like um, readjust the waistband so they don't have to like sit and unpick the whole thing. I don't make that known but if they ever look they'll see that the, um, there's a little gap there. Um, I don't actually finish it. Maybe I should, maybe that's unprofessional of me, but I always thought that like if they wanted to change the elastic, they, they just, it's, it's available for them to, to change. Anyway, let's go do my least favorite part where I've got to go and uh, fish through the, <laughs> the elastic band through this and then I close it off. And then I still think I want to do a top stitch on the fluke's bottom and uh, I want to I want to finish this off nicely as well and then we are finished so um, not much left to do guys okay I'm almost done so I have thread the elastic band through the casing it's sticking up the bottom here so I'm just gonna take it to the machine and I'm gonna sew this part closed 
So I'm going to continue to use a zigzag stitch, a zigzag stitch. Okay. And um, let's go for it. So there's just a lot of backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. Yeah. And then it's done. So. And just carefully place that inside. And now the elastic waistband is in. Okay, there you go. So I'm going to just uh, switch back before I forget to regular stitch. I'm going to turn the whole thing inside out and then I'm going to do a top stitch around the fluke. So now it's time to put the vinyl in. Um, I already had vinyl um, from one of my other deluxe tails, so I'm just gonna, for the sake of the video, just repurpose this old one. Um, so I'm just gonna hope that it's still gonna fit, you know, because these tend to be um, customized for each individual fluke. I'm just gonna hope that this is gonna fit in here. If not, I'll have to make some more vinyl um, tomorrow. I'm really hoping I don't have to do that though, because uh, again, besides doing the zip and the casing for the um, the casing for the elastic band, this is also my least favorite job. But it seems to be fitting quite nicely. So let's stretch them in there. Oh, it might be a little bit too big uh, for this one. Let's see if I can put it close. No, it's fine. No, it's fine. It fits. Okay. It's a little bit of a stretch, but it's okay. Okay, so there you go. Uh, that flick is quite enormous, eh? Ah, oh, you see, because it's too big, it's kind of pulling this up a little bit here. So that's why I do tend to cut my vinyl um, to each individual tail. But all right, I'm not going to stress about that because uh, I'm tired <laughs> and I don't want to do any more work. So I think um, tomorrow I'm going to take her for a swim. And that's a wrap for now guys. I've just finished everything and I'm going to save my swim for tomorrow and I will definitely include some clips of her swimming. Um, I'm tired now, my back is sore because I tend to also stand when I'm sewing. And um, so again, it's not, a, it's not a tutorial on how to do it from scratch like from a beginner. It's just a vlog to show you um, the things that I struggle with, the things that I don't struggle with, what I enjoy, what I don't enjoy, but also how I put your tail together. Um, but also just bear in mind the last part, the vinyl, uh, I, I would never do that for a client. Um, I would make uh, the vinyls for each individual person to fit their fluke exactly. So um, I may still do that for this tail, but for now, until I can go and buy more vinyl, I, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna leave it just as it is. Oh, look at my hair. Look how crazy my hair is looking. But anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed the content, please don't forget to like and subscribe, especially if you got to the end, you, you know. <laughs> well done. And um, so I'll see you in the pool next time. Cheers, guys. Bounce only by frozen memories